All right, what's going on everybody? This is Broken Games HDR, and in this video, I'm gonna give you my impressions of Sifu. So I think I'm gonna keep my impressions of this game on sort of like a macro level, because when you get into the weeds of this game and start explaining every little fine detail, it can become a little bit overcomplicated. Uh, when everything that somebody needs to know on a micro level is really something that they need to experience to understand and someone explaining to you really doesn't do it any justice, right? So Sifu is a martial arts roguelike action game. And I'm not sure if Slow Clap, who are the developers, really marketed the game that way and maybe I missed it. Of course, I know they explain the aging process and that was really what they tried to establish uh, that stood out about this game is that there's an aging process when you die and you come back and you're more powerful and you unlock all these moves. But I don't know if they really put the the, the label and the title of roguelike um, on this game. I, I, I at least never saw them describe it as that. And maybe they wanted to stay away from that title because people hear roguelike and at least... Recently, you know, people kind of, you know, get scared of those type of games because they can be challenging, you know, the Hades, the Returnals and everything like that. So maybe I missed it. Maybe they did advertise and market it as that, but I, I didn't see it, right? But that's the accurate description of this game. Now, as far as the story, which is, you know, pretty basic, um, nobody expected this game to have some type of deep story or narrative or, or lore or anything like that. Not that it's this brain dead game where you're just beating people up for no reason. There is a premise and a setup for it, which I'm going to explain. And by the way, this isn't spoilers. What I'm about to explain is just a setup for the game. And all of this happens within like the first five minutes of the game. But, you know, I know some people can be sensitive about what they consider spoilers. But this is the setup. A group of martial artists attack a martial arts school and massacre every student in there, right? One of the martial artists in the group of, of the attackers is actually a former student. This former student confronts the Sifu at that school. And by the way, I just learned like 30 minutes ago, Sifu actually means sensei, skillful person or master. So he's the master at that, uh, at that school. He confronts his former master because he wants some knowledge that his master has. Master refuses to give it to him. He kills the master. Also, there is a small child that they realize is still at the school. They bring the small child out. They kill the small child. The small child is revived by a magical talisman that makes them stronger, but also causes accelerated aging. And that's the setup for the game. So each time you die in this game, your your age is accelerated by your death counter. So if you're if you're 23, for example, and you've died three times, the next time you die, you are going to be 26. So the game is not just increasing your age by by an interval of one. You die around age, I think 75. I think once you get in your 70s and then after you hit your 70s and you die, then it's it's game over. Just like in any other, other roguelike, the things you permanently unlock, you get to keep though. So, and the game does give you ways to decrease your death counter uh, so you can age slow, slowly. And of course you want to keep your age low to get through these five challenging levels. Um, the older you get, the more damage you'll do, but you also have less health. So from what I gather, there's like an ideal age you want to be at. So you have more damage, but you also have a good amount of health. And I, I think it's like maybe late twenties, early thirties, maybe mid thirties, but that's, that's my guess. Now, as far as like some of the problems I have with Sifu is one, I don't think the game does... I don't think the game does enough to like explain every all the important mechanics and please believe i'm not somebody that wants the game to hold my hand right i think every game should explain for the most part there are some exceptions where i think it's okay if they don't explain mechanics but i think a game should explain all the major mechanics once and then get out the way and let me play the game you know after that you don't have to hold my hand and unless i missed it there was a few things like for example, the focus mechanic that the game doesn't explain, I had to figure it out on my own. The focus mechanic is pretty much this mechanic that slows 
uh, you know, pretty much slows the fighting to a standstill. And then you could select a, a pretty much a move that stuns the enemy. It's a move that will always hit and it stuns the enemy, right? Um, the skill tree, it, the way the skill tree is designed is a little bit complicated in my in my opinion for for no reason they have these temporary temporary unlocks and then you have your permanent unlocks and the way they just have it structured is just very odd to me i don't understand why they structured it in this way where for a permanent unlock you have to unlock it five times for like 500 xp uh each time like why not just make it 2500 xp the temporary unlock i understand because you may want to unlock the move just for your just for the run that you're currently on but you may not have enough xp to permanently unlock it so you still want to unlock it to get as far as you possibly can but overall i just don't know why it's structured this way also i think the default button layout kind of sucks i reconfigured reconfigured it um, by default, if I can remember off the top of my head, the game has uh, R2 as dodge. Um, circle is to pick up weapon. And triangle and circle is to do like the melee, the takedown executions. I changed it so that circle is dodge, R2 is pick up weapon, and R3 is to do the takedowns. And it, I think it's a lot more simple that way. There are a little bit drawbacks to even that configuration, but I think it's it's still much better than how the game has it by default. So you got to play around with it and see what works for you. But I don't recommend keeping just learning the game on the default on the default uh, button layout. And I recommend doing it at the very beginning, so you're not like me and you program. I pretty much had to ro reprogram my brain to remember. R2 is no longer dodge because I played like that for three hours. So I had to do a, a bunch of uh, um, reprogramming, especially with the muscle memory. Now, one thing people need to know about this game is this is a this is honestly like a fighting game in 3D levels. Imagine it. And I don't want to like say this is on the same technical level as like, a, a, you know, like a street fighter. That's not what I'm saying. But it's the same concept pretty much, right? It's not like a, a beat em up, a brainless beat em up and not to not to uh, shame um, Streets of Rage or any game like that uh, because I enjoy those games and those are fun, but it's it's not like that. This game is an anti, it's, an, it's anti button mashing. Button mashing will not work on this game. It will not help you whatsoever. Just like button mashing won't help in most fighting games. If you want to do anything advanced and if you want to be uh, accurate and um, strategic and tactical, it just won't work. Now, one of the problems with this game playing like a fighting game is if you play any fighting game, you know, most people will use a fight stick, a fight pad. And most importantly, if you're using a fight pad or just a controller, you would use the directional buttons. You don't use the analog stick in this game you're essentially playing a fighting game, but using an analog stick. And the reason why that can be difficult is doing certain motions. Like, let's say you have, you know, let's go with a basic fighting game uh, motion, which is quarter circle forward, right? Everybody knows that's played any fighting game, even if you're a casual, that's the universal motion for a fireball, for a fireball. That's down, you know, pr pretty much down forward and whatever the button is, uh, maybe usually like um, square X, whatever the hell you're playing on. You know, everybody knows the default fire, fi uh, fireball. But that's, even though that's a fairly easy motion, it's much easier to do with directional buttons than it is an analog stick. You could do it a lot more accurately with directional buttons. But in this game, once again, you're pretty much playing a fighting game with an analog stick. So that can be really hard to adjust to and that can be hard to consistently and accurately pull off certain moves. Um, and that can get you hit a lot. Sometimes, you know, just adapting to the fact that that's how you have to play, 
that can be the real challenge of the game. Another problem is the camp. Sometimes the camera can be impacted. Like if you if you get pushed up against the against the wall and you're fighting against a group, the camera can definitely be an issue. So if you anybody knows about fighting games, it this takes time to learn, right? I think some people are watching other people play Sifu and be like, oh, you're getting washed. Uh, no, they're not getting washed. They have to learn the move set. That's one. They have to practice it. Two, then they have to actually learn in what situations to apply that same moves they, they spent time practicing in an actual combat situation. People who play fighting games will will literally spend hours in the lab just to learn one advanced combo. And then actually pulling it off in a combat scenario is a whole nother story, right? Once again, not saying Sifu is is on that severe level, but it's it's a it's similar. It's on it's on it's the same concept. So you have to actually do all of that. Go and practice, go into practice, uh, memorize these moves, and by the way. There's like you have to learn, you have to unlock all the skill tree by gaining XP by playing the game. And then you have to learn all these moves and then incorporate them and, and apply them. Right. So it can become that's why I said it can really become a little bit complex. Now, the comp, the, the combat is grounded. Right. You know how in a lot of games, like let's say you do an attack, the game will push you towards the enemy or lunge you somewhat towards the enemy and the attack will land. That's not happening in Sifu, right? If you do a punch and the enemy is is just not within the uh not within the range of that punch, you're just going to be punching air. You're just going to hit nothing but air. And the enemies are very the the AI in this game is very smart. They actually space and zone you. So, if they attack you, right? And they finish a, a string of that attack. They're not going to stand there. Something, you know, once in a while, you know, you you will get enemies that maybe they don't move. But a lot of the enemies, it's not like, okay, I did my attack. I'm going to stand here and let you get your turn to attack. No, they're going to move. They're they're going to they're going to dodge. Just like you, just like in this game, you can deflect, you can dodge, you can space, you can back up and then move back in. The enemies are going to do the the exact same things. So the AI in this game deserves a lot of credit. The animations are fluid, so so that so that's good. Um, but sometimes it can be hard, and this is not a knock on the game, but this is something you kind of got to adjust to. It can be hard to transition from like defense to offense because there's like there seems to be like a block stun or hit stun on your on your character, and that's you know another fighting game term. When you get hit, there's like this delay before you can necessarily go directly into uh, an attack and go on the offense. That's why um, deflecting and uh, dodging in the right direction, whether high, low, and I think you, you, can, you can also do left, right. Um, that's why that's, that's really important because that will leave the enemy open. And, and, the, and the timing is small. The windows for counterattacks and the window for deflect parrying do dodging um it's 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 pretty small right i would even say like you because we know in games like for example sekiro deflecting and um parrying is everything in this game i would say it's actually harder to deflect and parry consistently than it is in a game like sekiro um so I say all that to say that this is a game that like you have actually have to invest some time in. It's not just some fly by night like oh I'm just gonna beat people up and just run through the the you know the levels and uh, it's over with. Now you could play it very safe and that's one thing you have to understand about this game is it doesn't benefit you to be reckless, right? You have to even when you if you unlock every move. Once again, you have to know when to apply these moves and not leave yourself vulnerable, not leave yourself open to a bunch of attacks, right? It, it, it's just very, uh, you know, like I said, it, it is a very technical game. Um, the art style is good. The music is good. You know, I think the art style is, is fine for the game. Um, but yeah, I think this game won't necessarily be for everybody because everybody may not want to 
make that actual investment to actually play this way and be and be patient and learn the ins and outs of the mechanics and, and all that stuff. So for that reason, it may not be for everybody. But for me, I'm enjoying it. I think it's a good game. Um, is it? Do I think it's amazing? No. But I think it's it's a very solid um, martial arts action game. Um, I think it's worth it for you know the forty dollars. Uh, would I think the average person? Because I know people always ask. Well, is it worth it? Well, I can only answer that for me. But do I think? What do I think the average person? would think this is this is worth the average person would probably think this is worth like 20 to 30 dollars so if it went on sale for 30 dollars you know i would say pick it up i think that's it that's an accurate price for it so yeah that's um i think those that's my impressions i think that really covers and explains what this game is like um gotta have patience you gotta learn from your deaths and uh, once again, not a button masher, not a button masher. If you if you put a lot of the inputs for certain moves in this game, if you do it too fast, they won't even come out. <laughs> it, it, you even in practice mode, like if it's square, square, triangle, square. If you hit that too fast, the move won't even come out. Come out. You have to know the timing of the move. You have to know the pacing of it anti-button masher and um that's that's very important and they you know that's that's obviously an intentional design how they made this game so th those are my impressions let me know what you think uh hit the like button hit the notification bell follow me on twitter and uh thank you for all of your support i'm out of here peace